Coming up, what is a warm bank? Well, I've been to visit one to find out. And why have thousands of girls in Iran been taken to the streets to protest? Hello. Hello! All that to come and more. There's a new report out about the state of our wildlife. So, Brayden, that's Jackson behind us. Now, he's invented a game about the world's animals. Hi, Jackson. Hi. Right. We'll speak to you later. But first, not all this week's stories have been true. Or have they? It's time for... Fake news or fact? You know what these are, right? Hello. How can I help you? Well, we won't say their name in case they go off in your house. The posh name for them is Artificial Intelligence, or AI. Well, New Cambridge University research says artificial intelligence is making us young people less intelligent. How dare they? I know, right? Apparently, we're relying on them too much and the answers aren't always right or detailed enough. So, do you think that's fake news or fact? You know what? Can I ask a lot? No, Brayden, we'll tell you later. So, Brayden, have you heard of something called a warm bank? I have heard of one, but I'm not quite sure what it actually is. Well, it's a very new idea, so I don't think many people know about it. The money our parents pay for heating is higher than it's ever been before. The main reason has been the war in Ukraine. Governments didn't want to buy gas and oil from Russia anymore to cause problems for the president, Vladimir Putin. But because there's less fuel available, the bills our parents pay have gone up. And even though the government are going to help them, it's still way more expensive than last year. If your family are worried about paying the bills, one way you could save on heating is talking to a trusted adult and see if you could visit a warm bank. For some time now, we've had food banks, where people who don't have enough money for food are given vouchers to make sure they get something to eat. But a warm bank is a bit different. They're for anyone. So I thought I'd try one out. I'm here with the film crew, but if you want to come to one, make sure you talk to a trusted adult first. Hi there. I'm good, how are you? So far, so good. It's always a bit weird walking into a place you've never been before, but luckily Atia made me feel really welcome. They said I can stay here as long as I want, so I put my phone on charge. There's lots of things to do while you're here. You can get a book, help yourself to a hot drink, grab a biscuit, play a game, just hang out. It's nothing like a bank at all. Steve, who has opened this one, thinks warm banks need another name. Do you like it? Yeah, I love it here. Yeah. It has the feeling of kind of like a homey and a very chillaxed and friendly library. We wanted to create exactly what you've said, it, like a homey feel, warm in every way. But we decided not to call them warm banks or warm mm -hmm. spaces because we want people to be able to save cash. Anyone can come in and that's why it's not a warm bank. Steve has come up with a simple name for the warm bank. The living room. Makes sense to me. There'll be all sorts of different names. Living room, warm bank, warm space. But they'll all do the same thing. A good way to find out about one near you is to ask at school. They might even be running one. And it looks like they're going to be really popular. What do you like the most about it? I get to play with my friends a bit more often and um, I get to play football. I like the food and you get to do whatever you want in the playground area. I like do the drawing there, I play Monopoly. Some children that come here, they're from other schools around the area. They love this community, that's why they come here. The name Warm Bank would suggest that like, you need to be warm because you can't afford to be warm, but it's really not about that. It's a really nice community here. It's safe and it's comfortable. Living room, warm bank, whatever it's called, it's good to know that there'll be a safe and warm place to hang out this winter. When you see a cricket, do you think, ooh, lunch? How about now? Or would this be too much on your plate? Ah, yeah, me too. Crickets are certainly not a meat-free alternative, but it's sustainable and they've always been a delicacy in Thailand. 
Apparently though, they're a bit crunchy, so to make them easier to swallow, a fast food chain are using them to make the Bounce Burger. Oh. Don't try this at home though. With or without ketchup, eating random insects is not a good idea. What are you up to, Braden? I'm just looking at some of the other stories that's going on in the world, and I tell you what, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I've been following schoolgirls in Iran who have been protesting. It's a very strict regime they have in their country, so it's unusual to see anybody protest, really, but especially girls our age. Yeah, I saw some of those. Look at this. Yeah, for a long time, many girls and women in Iran have been angry that they haven't had a choice about whether to wear headscarves or not. They're forced to. That's right, and I found out that these protests started to happen because it was reported a young woman died while in police custody. Masa Amini was arrested for not wearing her headscarf properly. The police said that they were not responsible for her death, but people who saw her injuries think the reports that she had been beaten by the police are true. Sadly, since then, reports have been emerging of other deaths. Even some people who choose to wear a hijab don't think it's right. You might have heard of Malala? Yeah. She was given a Nobel Peace Prize after her campaign for girls to be given the chance to go to school. Now, she always wears a hijab, but look what she said. Whatever a woman chooses to wear, she has the right to decide for herself. Though the girls have supporters all around the world, Iran has a special police force who check what girls and women are wearing, and this strict regime may mean the girls aren't allowed to change the rules or even continue protesting. Women around the world have been showing their support by saying that hair is yours to do with as you please. Wear a hijab, don't wear a hijab, cut your hair, grow your hair out. They think it should be your choice. A lot's been happening in Ukraine too. About a week ago, the bridge between Russia and Crimea was bombed. While Ukraine hasn't claimed responsibility for the bridge attack, it does help their war effort because it makes it harder for the Russians to get supplies through to their army. And this is really embarrassing for Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, as he had built the bridge when he took control of Crimea back in 2014. So in return, Putin ordered missile attacks and these struck lots of places all over Ukraine. Vladimir Zelensky, Ukraine's president, says that these missile attacks were a little bit different because they were targeted on where people lived, including the capital, Kyiv. World leaders who spoke on Tuesday said that they would stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. Still to come, numbers of mountain gorillas are on the up, but have you seen a hedgehog recently? We'll have the latest on our planet's animals. That is really cute. But first, here's another one of your reports where you tell us about your world. Hi, I'm Tobin. And at the moment, I'm walking towards Wales's big opera house, the Millennium Centre. But why am I going inside here? Because opera is what I do. During lockdown, I joined a Zoom group run by the Welsh National Youth Opera. Now, we're back to normal. We are well, as normal as opera can be. We meet to learn, rehearse and perform opera. <laughs> I'm now in the rehearsal room, being guided by my buddy, Alera. Opera is a very important aspect of my life because it, um, it frees me up and it allows me, to be, uh, it allows me to be a bit quirky. If you met me on the street, so how I would talk to you then, it's completely different to the character I might play on stage. Everything in opera is over the top. It's never, it's never how I would talk to you. It's always like, ha-ha, here I am. Someone who knows all about that is Nicky Spence. He's a famous opera singer, and he's come to see what we do. So, Tobin, is this a archetypal warm-up here at Welsh National Opera? It is. We've had a bit of wiggling as well. We have had a little bit of wiggling. How essential is wiggling to opera singing? Oh, I've said quite. So, Tobin, I'm really interested to know how you actually learn music. Mm-hmm. Because obviously you can't read the music. No. In the, a normal way that we would, the boring way. How do you do it? I'm registered blind. I use what we like to call braille music. So braille's a system that blind people can read. So it's a system of raised dots. They puncture the paper kind of thing. So you can feel them underneath the top of the tippy top of your finger, usually your index finger. So that gives you the information. So either words or in our case, music. 
uh, or music and words as we're both singers. Brilliant. So you will use this really to take home and learn. Take home and learn and yeah. reference. So the other way I learn is through a call and response method. Per mi oro vano, per mi oro when Nicky sings a line and then I copy his line. Sad am I without thee. It's a Christmas single waiting to happen. It's lovely. Once I know the music, I have to think about how I will get around the stage. For our recent opera, The Black Spider, that we did in the youth opera, we put tactile markings down on stage, which meant I could feel it underneath my feet. So when I was coming up to an edge, I knew that, oh, I have about another pace if I need to use the other pace. But like, I knew that any further, I'm going to go off the edge. I also rely on other cast members to guide me around the stage, like Penelope and Ewan. They knew that if they needed to grab me, they could grab me and they would move me. Sometimes, like when we were doing Black Spider, when there's the bit where you have to like kind of go back into the crowd. I know you've definitely dragged me off stage at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them my permission to do that because if they didn't have my permission, that wouldn't be very, be very nice. I love watching you read the Braille. And that's kind of inspired me in a way to think, OK, yeah, I can do that regardless of just anything that's happened in my life. I think Tobin is an extremely impressive young man and the fact that he wants to sing opera is good news for us all. Cheers, Tobin. And if you do something a little bit different, then get in touch with us via our FYI website. You could end up making a special report for us or even sitting on the sofa like Jackson is now. Come on. Mm. Hello, Hi. Jackson. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So what's this? This is the card game I invented called SOS, which stands for Save Our Species. I like the name, it's pretty clever actually. So how did it come about? So I was very lucky to go on holiday to Costa Rica and visit a turtle conservation place. I got to learn firsthand about animals that are at risk of extinction, such as the hawksbill turtle. And we've got pictures of that, I mean, look at it, it's massive. Yeah, it was amazing to see. There are hardly any of them left and they could be lost forever. So how do you play the game? Well, the aim of the game is to collect as many species points as possible. The more endangered the species, the higher the points. For example, the wild dog is worth four points, whereas the emperor penguin is only worth one point. So Jackson, I know you worked with World Wildlife Fund on the game, and I've heard they've got a new report out. Yeah, this is a health check on the species and habitat in the natural world. So what's the headline? On average, the population of all global wildlife has decreased by 69% over the last 50 years. Wow. That's a lot. Take the oceanic white-tipped shark, for example. It's declined over 95% in the last 50 years. It's now on the red list, which means it's critically endangered. And it's not just sharks on the decline, is it? No. A really important ecosystem that is at threat is the coral reef. If sea waters continue to rise, then all this amazing marine life will be at risk. But it's not all bad news, is it? I've heard that apparently some species are actually growing. Yeah, animals like the mountain gorilla, their numbers are actually improving. Wow. But you don't need to go travelling to see wildlife. Here in Britain, if you haven't seen a hedgehog in a long time, that's probably a sign that they're in decline in your area too. So how do we help animals in decline? There's a feature in my game called a wildlife corridor, which is a card that helps connect two habitats together. And that's the best way of protecting animals, by protecting their habitat and allowing them to move to new habitats where they can survive. One of the reasons that they think hedgehogs are in decline is because they can't travel from one place to another. So a good idea is to put a hole in your fence to make sure your garden is a wildlife corridor for hedgehogs. It's called a hedgehog highway. I think that's a really good feature in the game and I'm sure the hedgehogs would be happy as well. Good luck with your game, thanks for coming in today. Right, well there's just enough time to figure out whether this week's story was fake news or fact. Let's do it! Earlier on, we told you about a report that new research from Cambridge University says AI artificial intelligence is making us children less intelligent. Because we're relying on machines to give the answers rather than work it out ourselves. That's exactly it. Well, it's fake news. It's fake because there is no new research. It was an opinion given by someone from Cambridge University. I thought so. There's nothing wrong with my brain. So you got that right then? Uh, I'm not prepared to answer that. <laughs> well, that's all from us. And we thought with King Charles's coronation set for the 6th of May next year, we'd leave you with a corgi parade that took place in memory of the Queen at Buckingham Palace last week. Oh, look at them all. Cute. Bye. <laughs>